Welcome back, family, as we continue our voyage into madness as Cthulhu Death and I Fear of the Unknown continues to crawl and shamble and slither its way forward to being fulfilled. So what are we currently at now? We are at $1.88 million raised. Um, so we're doing a fantastic job here we've got five days left so we'll see that certainly increase um, as to how much don't know um, we have today from the Simon crew um, a further update um, week in review so ahead of theirs coming out which will be noon EST which will be 5 p.m. UK standard time so live in 10 hours um, I thought I'd jump on and give us a week in review and see what has been unlocked and talk through this content because there is a bucket load of updates. So the last update we looked at, we looked at Anita, the new investigator being a animal trainer being unlocked. So Attention class, the Dark Professor is here. She was indeed unlocked and along came with her a plethora of animals, creatures and obscenities um, from the the darkness. So just in time to her beast tutor skills are going to be very handy for nature itself has started to change all around us. Um, at 1.6 million, 6.7 uh, million we up, like, unlock the mutated animals. So this is the fox, the rabbit, the squirrel, and the groundhog. Um, not entirely sure who made the decision on those animals, but they look cool. So without further ado, let's dig in. <laughs> Loving this. <laughs> okay, rather a special and different monster comprised of four different mutated animals that act together as a single monster in the game. And the benefit of being grouped together when attacking or being attacked, they add tentacle icon to the role of each mutated animal in the same space. So let's take a look at these horrific critters. Mutated fox, I want to kill whoever or whatever created that, is the quote from Bruno. So let's have a look. So if the prey has changed, it can only be expected that the predators change too. These creatures show on... Um, Show no fear of humans and bigger creatures, and the natural curiosity replaced by raw violence. Have a look at the uh, the sculpt there. Love that. It's like it's uh, it's kind of almost two foxes mutated together in that uh, view, <coughs> and then we had the mutated groundhog. How deep does the influence of mutation go? Deep enough to poison the roots, water, and any small creature that tried to find safety underground. Groundhogs were hardly ever seen before, and now it's common to see this abomination raising from the dirt, looking for prey much bigger than itself. <laughs> Flipping eyes and mouths and teeth. Fantastic job. And then we had the mutated squirrel. I love the tentacles coming out of the eyes on this thing. <laughs> so one that influences a strange event. Trees and plants blossomed and grew with frightening speed. Their leaves of unnatural shades, their fruits with impressive size and horrendous flavour. Some animals didn't seem to realise it. It soon changed as well. The poor creatures retained its original anxiety, but none of its race. So we say, scroll, I don't even like these tree rats when they're normal, is the uh, quote from Leon. Uh, let's have a look at that sculpt there. Brilliant. And uh, we've got a painted one of those as well. Nice. The extra rib cage view. <coughs> and last but not least, we have the rabbit. 
something of a watership down look, I suspect. Although with these big ears, are they more um, hares rather than rabbits? Anyway, um, so it'd be Tatey Rabbit. Best to hunt them and burn the corpse. Let nothing of such abomination remain. That's a quote from John. It all began with dreadful events in which city folks not taking the old farmer seriously. Which time nature, with time nature started to respond to it, responding horribly. That is this creature that could once have been a rabbit is proof of it. Its eyes no longer bear anything in the innocence of its speeches. Now it just reflects the raw power of the mutation. There it is, just, <laughs> just. <coughs> A whole concoction of rabbits moulded together. <laughs> Fantastic. So that was it. And uh, I suspect that there is something bigger coming. In fact, I know because they've already unlocked it now. But uh, even at this point, um, for those of you who are Lovecraftian fans in the movies, there was a uh, movie not too long ago, um, The Colour of space I believe it was called a color from outer space and um, with uh, Nicolas Cage and they did a tremendous job on, on um, I think bringing to life some of these monstrosities and these entities so if you have not um, already seen that I can highly recommend that from from that perspective and the, the acting was really good actually I was pleasantly surprised um, so there we go. So then we got up to uh, update number 31. I think we'll see more of this sort of stuff. So uh, as a new week dawns, we gather to welcome the beginning of a new cycle. Our current ritual of summon a pack of nasty critters continues. So these have been added and unlocked. Uh, and as I've noticed, the signs that it's leading to our eater, the dark professor and her exquisite clash in Tammy Beasts. Nature shifts in unrecognizable way, creating twisted creatures and mock earthly life. It seems his animal uh, of our reality are being affected at a struggle between the investigators and the forces of the occult. It's time to find out what will come out of it. I would like to introduce a new expansion, Cthulhu's Death Valley, the unique Kickstarter exclusive Animal Allies. Now, this seems to be land quite mixed within the community. Um, for me personally, these are adding relic cards, which I'm sure we'll go into a bit more. Um, so, they're an alternative um, that could be added in, is, is my understanding, rather than you would add this in addition to the other relic cards. Um, you may mix them up and and say you know oh yeah you've got these relics to choose from one is an animal one is not an animal what have you um but love the fact you've got 10 um ally figures uh, with five ally cards so as you flip the card over you actually get the alternative rend um of of these uh, these animals and and obviously they upgrade in their power and ability which is fantastic so so many monitors uh, monsters and eldritch creatures creeping around. It's very soothing to know that we're investigators count on our allies by their side, even if sometimes with the light something, uh, light shift, something seems wrong with them. Uh, that's just an optical illusion, right? Animal allies kickstart expansion to continue their way die. We're offering as an optional buy for backers for twenty-five dollars. This expansion brings with it new relic cards of the game, except this time they are animal allies that will join investigators on the board, following them around. So the animal allies comes with ten animal figures, five relic cards, and rules leaflet. So you can see we've got an owl, dog, a snake, monkey, and a cat, um, and they're alternative sculpts for each. So gameplay then. Animal allies are a special type of relic that can be added to the pool of available unknown relics. Just like other relics, each animal ally comes in two different forms, an initial form and an upgraded form. Unlike relics, however, each animal ally is also represented by two figures that move around the board. One for the starting side of the relic, and one for the upgraded side and interact with the enemies. During setup, the starting ally figures are paced on a starting space along with the investigators. From then on, the allies move on the board, either following investigators or on their own, attacking enemies, luring monsters away from the choosers. Um, 
taking wounds of pseudo investigators, allowing them to re-roll and protecting them against all enemies. So, allies do not count as figures for game purposes, for example, effects like psychotic outbreaks that states move to the nearest space with at least one figure. Allies are ignored for this effect. Instead, they count as tokens and have their own set of rules for moving. Whenever an investigator leaves a space where there's an ally, uh, the loyal as they are, the ally may follow them, even if the investigator is not controller of the relic. In addition, the investigator in the control of the any ally may move their pet companion up to three spaces as a free action. This is particularly important as the placement of each ally is crucial to achieve maximum benefits out of the effects. So, the connection between these animals and their choose is undeniable. And so, just like other relics, as the investigators' sanity rise, their allies' behaviours react accordingly. Upon reaching a third of the sanity milestone, the card is flipped, reflecting the choose's insanity and a new upgraded behaviour from the allies. Their figures are board are replaced and upgraded counterpart to represent their state. Conversely, if the investigators kill their allies removed from the board as they run away in despair. So now let's take a closer look at the best boys and girls. And our allies, the Midna, the cat. As a kid, I called my cat a familiar. This time, I think it's true. It's a quote from Sandra. And <laughs> when you flip it over, wow, okay, so let's have a look. So when it moves, it may bring one enemy with it. Um, and then when you reach your three insanity mark, uh, when Midna moves, it may bring up to two enemies with it. At the end of your turn, do two runes each enemy in Midna's space. Uh, and this could be interesting to see some comments online around, actually, this could be very dangerous if you use this uh, relic minion with um, someone like the black goat and the children um, because you would end up with a spawn fest occurring um, so yeah might want to treat some of these with caution uh, depending on the other components of the game that you're going to be playing certainly could make for very interesting times um, to quote a Terry Pratchett book. Uh, Midna is not afraid of monsters, cultists, nor the Cthulhu itself. Rather, she goes around the cart board as carefree as can be, unfazed by the enemies allowed following her. Uh, sometimes it even seems as if she's leading the monsters to where she wants them. In her upgraded version, Midna deals two wounds to all enemies that she lures. There she is in both the normal form and her upgraded form. Um, fantastic sculpts as always fantastic artwork really looking forward to those so then we have Luna the Hound with the quote now there's a good gal let's clean all the blood off you from Gary <laughs> and the upgraded look <laughs> fantastic Luna the dog so investigators bring uh, being attacked in the same space as Luna have two free re-rolls. Which is nice, and it becomes a cursed Luna. Investigators being attacked in the same space as Luna have two free rolls. If an investigator in the same space as Luna would take any wounds, you may remove Luna from the board to prevent those wounds. So all damage gets absorbed. So Luna's the best guard dog anyone could ask for. Friendly and sweet with allies. Deadly against enemies, she always protects her own. Investigators being attacked in the same space as her gain two free rerolls. In her upgraded version, she could also get in the way of attacks, preventing investigators from being wounded. As we were just reading. So, we have Titus the Chimp. This little fellow knows how to party from Leon the show off <coughs> and swinging into action in his upgraded form so chimpanzee apologies not a monkey <laughs> so titus the chip uh, once per turn is a special action target a single enemy in titus space and make a roll each success rolls causes one wound to this target this doesn't count as an attack that could be very handy Certain circumstances. Um, <clears throat> why has he lost a hand? Once per turn, as a free action, target a single enemy in tighter space and make a roll. 
Each success roll causes one moon to the target. So this doesn't count as attack. Um, is that not the same as that? Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> make no mistake. This is not a pet. One could say he's close to being a partner to investigators, sharing their distaste for the cultists and the ways. Strong and feral such as he is, enemies in tighter space are always risking taking extra damage from him. In this upgraded state, the damage dealt by him comes as a free action. Ah, there we go, so that's the difference. There we go. Definitely got a stump. Bless him. Um, there we go. That had been investigated, uh, been um, experimented on. Uh, I think we found something like, like that an equivalent of the very first episode of Cthulhu Death and I Season 1. And we have Celeste the Snake. I like her. She has a talent for being unseen yet helpful. It's a quote from Ruth. And as you can see, the upgraded state. There, the graphics. Investigators in the same space as Celeste have one free reroll when attacking, and when the upgraded enchanted Celeste, uh, investigators in the same space as Celeste have three free rolls when attacking. Uh, Celeste knows <coughs> knows how to be discreet. But she also knows how to be very distracting. It's hard to focus on fighting an investigator when there's enormous serpents looking right into your eyes. This gives investigators the same space as Celeste one free reroll when attacking. And when Celeste is in her enchanted state, they get three free rerolls instead. As enemies simply can't take their eyes off her. There we go, and there she is in her standard form and her upgraded there we go. Now we have an owl. A Percy the owl, no less. A symbol of luck and wisdom, a protective spirit. We are fortunate. Hui Kong. Quote. And the upgraded form. Man, you wouldn't want to think of flying through a room, about you, would you? <laughs> so some look, Percy the owl. Uh, so once per turn as a free action, an investigator in the same space as Percy may take one item or companion from another investigator on the board. They must agree. So nice way to trade without uh, spending action. And it's anywhere on the board, so that's useful. However, possessed Percy, once per turn as a free action, an investigator in the same space as Percy may take one item as a companion or any other investigator on the board. They must agree investigators in the same space as Percy gain an extra green die when attacking. Nice. So, Percy watches the fight unfold from above, attentive to the surroundings, his sharp eyes notice even the smallest details, and he'll swiftly catch anything that might be of use in its owner. Once the turn, an investigator in the same space as Percy may take an item from a companion, another investigator in the possessed state, uh, Percy will add uh, in battle, granting his power, uh, sorry, his owner, a bonus attack die, as we've seen a green die. Very good. And there we have him, peacefully resting on his perch, poised to attack. <laughs> Excellent, and that's what we get. So if you want to bring these new allies to your game, you can add these as the Kickstarter exclusive animal allies. And I think a lot of these are fantastic too, because you, obviously, you, you know, if you've got a plethora of other games where you have got uh, familiars and animal representatives, then you know these these sculpts uh, very easily be used in, in other games as well. Um, but uh, for for this particular game, really really liking this concept and the idea of these uh, these animals that upgrade. Um, so yeah, I can really see these being shuffled in and added to uh, the the menagerie of relics we already have elsewhere. So yeah, fantastic ad. So we unlocked uh, this Kickstarter exclusive extra. And we had a special, because of course it was Halloween. And um, I don't, uh, personally, I've not seen this before from um, Simon, but I really like this idea that they added to uh, special theme relics, uh, but they made it a, um, a community vote. So they put forward a number of ideas, of details on what the relics were. 
but uh, offered it out for people to to um, to go online and vote for either the broomstick that became the flying broomstick, the cauldron became the magic cauldron, the pumpkin that became a jack o' lantern, the skull that became the headless horseman's skull, the spooky hat that became Boa Erga's hat, or the bag of candies that became poisoned candies and so they had for a very short window up until midnight est uh, the opportunity to go and off, um, take part in this reliquine special poll and then of course we had um, the proposed unlocking at 1.72 million uh, craig adamson was it craig or was it bill nighy in the shallow girl there he is um, <laughs> unmistakable face, bless him. Fantastic, great to have him added to the fray. I'm afraid we're only serving lead for dinner this evening, is the uh, quote from Craig Adamson. So, Craig worked in many high-end restaurants during his life, so he naturally came across all eccentricities, the wealthy and famous, paranormal experiences included. As an experienced majority, he sh should have pretended to see nothing, hear nothing, served his clientele as best as possible. But some things are simply impossible to ignore, especially when the clientele will start raising sacrificial noises against their patrons. Craig jumped into the action, hasn't really stopped his tireless signature. His tireless signature move uh, allows him to perform free run actions at the cost of stress, but the more he develops, the more spaces and times he can do it. His great mobility is further enhanced with stealth skill, which allows him to move past monsters and finally with marksmen, Craig is able to shoot enemies from afar. Need a handy investigator to get to an important area and what needs to be done quick? Look no further. Craig's your man. Oh, and please don't forget to tip. There he is. Fantastic. So he was added to the affair. And then we had the results of the Reliquine poll. So we had a very clear winner here in the skull, on the Headless Horseman's um, skull. Um, not too far followed by the Pumpkin Jacko Lantern. But over 5,000 votes. Uh, these will be added to everyone's pledges. And speaking of spooky things, burning through the skies comes an odd meteorite. Should we risk our sanity to investigate it? Now, 1.79 million, the colour out of space figure and card are added to the fray. The colour out of space, seething, feeling, lapping, searching, scintillating, straining and malignantly bubbling. It is this cosmic and unrecognisable chromaticism. There it is. Fantastic. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, this was, uh, I think, definitely foreseeable on the cards with the introduction of these um, mutated critters and animals. Um, if you haven't seen the uh, the latest rendition of the movie, I can highly recommend it. Um, so the colour out of space received its name for its closest to explanation humans could have for this ethereal waves emanated from the meteorite that are barely visible by the retina it could even be described as beautiful if not so terrifying investigators should carefully consider attacking it and be on their best psychiatric shape <laughs> as this bizarre cosmic entity drains two sanity each time it is wounded ouch it would be better to avoid it entirely, but alas, that is not a possibility. When the Elder One advances on the track, so does the colour out of space on the board, dealing wounds, stress, and taking sanity simultaneously for all investigators in its space, and it needs to be sent back to where it came from before it's too late. You, know, you see people being sucked in and mutated and embraced <laughs> by this colour. Fantastic. Just a great job. Look at that. Look at the face. The face. Twisted forms. Brilliant. There we go. And there's a, obviously a comparison. As you can see. Just how big this thing is. Compared to the investigators. Loving that sculpt. So. Uh, update 35 then. Brought. 
a continued run through um, from its designer and how it compares to its predecessor. So this time uh, Marco was talking through uh, the new mechanics included in the game. Uh, the new investigators, sorry, so we looked at the new mechanics last time. Uh, this is the new investigators. So, as I mentioned last time, modularity is one of the key things that Cthulhu Death may die. Part of this modularity comes from a variety of investigators you could choose from. <coughs> and now you can mix and match the investigators, their insanities, and their relics. Investigators are an important aspect of the game. Um, and, and the narrative identify how your characters are playing with the unique skills of the combination their three skills have a major impact on how the episode unfolds creating a new roster of investigators with new core boxes is no easy task each investigator in the game has a combination of two basic skills and one unique skill we should not change the six basic skills brawling marksman swiftness stuff toughness and arcane mastery since they core part of the game however the real challenge is to create new unique set of 10 skills interesting enough for old players without being too complex for the new so agatha may chicago illinois um learn to shoot and people wouldn't stop calling me aggie <laughs> so here she is with her miniature and her painted version so there we go and there's her board so that's nice. Obviously, all of this now you can see is all available on tabletop simulators. You can go online and have a look at those. And I think somebody in the Facebook group as well also downloaded and created this content as printable PDFs. So you can go on the Facebook group and grab those. And if you have already got, like myself, season one or two, um, you can print out those components and actually physically get it to the table and have a bash, a uh, prototype bash, a, a real life, if you like, tabletop simulator <coughs> experience of the first episode with the new Elder One and these new characters and some of the relic cards and wandering monsters as well, unknown monsters. Um, so Agatha gets the job done, her killer instinct skill makes it easy for her to clear the enemies in the scenario. Not only that, but it also levels up. She's able to inflict more, even more damage which combined with marks and makes her very well equipped to shoot the Elder One in the face. Stealth is also a great synergy with Marksman as being able to sneak enemies allows her to attack from a distance. Then we had Hui Kong to fight. Be where they are not. It is that easy and that hard. So Hu Kong is his miniature and painted sculpt. So if you like a more resilient character, Hu Kong is investigative for you. His self-defense skill allows him to push enemies away as long as it doesn't take any wounds from their attacks. It's an easy task for him due to his toughness. At the last level, he can start to take down huge groups of cultist monsters just by defending himself. It's really not the idea of the incorporation of that martial art into the gameplay. We had Julian Dulik from Yugoslavia. Boy is saying he doesn't think this is a good idea. This boy doesn't speak. <laughs> Just love the concept of this character. And I've seen this uh, in, in a live playthrough as being used as well. Uh, just great fun. I think that was on the uh, Quackalope channel if, you, if you're of interest. So the boy's silent witness heals him if he is fine with losing some sanity from tentacles. As it levels up, he can heal even more and eventually gains the ability to prevent loss of sanity from tentacles, which can help preventing him from dying from insanity. His stealth is a great skill to help him move unhindered through the board. And the arcane mastery confers him even more control over dice results. So, great level of manipulation and survival, obviously, has the kid um, and we had Stella Fontaine from France science has many practical applications to like combining otherwise stable substances into something dangerously volatile the, do the joy of watching things explode is far more common among scientists chemists in particular than people might believe there we go so mixing vials and concoctions 
and nicely painted up mini there. Marksman and Arcane Mastery is one of the best combinations to deal with huge enemies in this game. As you get to attack enemies from afar and count other sign results as successes, status chemical explosives enhance this potential allowing her to multiple targets at the same time. All you have to do is mix the right ingredients for an eldritch sized kaboom. <laughs> so chemical explosives being her key ability. And we have Leon Barnes from Miami, Florida. I'll slow down a bit and let you guys catch up. He was a soldier in the Great War, an officer and gentleman fighting alongside the British, awarded him the Medal of Honor three times, no less. <laughs> and again, I've seen this. Uh, this is one of the other characters featured in that Cracker Oak playthrough. He likes to show off to so his investigators and gets bonuses. There are other investigators near him in his skills last level. He gets bonus for each other investigator that's near, making him a great choice for a game with higher player counts. Level 3 of the Swiftness has a nice synergy with his own show off skill since it allows him to bring another investigator when moving. And we have Ruth Weber from Germany. Turns out even Elder Chorus don't check every shadow. As a freelance investigator reporter, Ruth finds herself looking into the most unusual situations. There we go. Love. They, they just done a, such a great job on the, the creases and everything with that little pen and notepad. Um, love that investigator look. It reminds me a bit of the uh, Harry Potter uh, reporter, if you, for those that remember that. In, uh, I think it was the F Goblet of Fire. So, Ruth is an eager investigator reporter. Um, her skills are all about mobility. She has swiftness and stealth, which work well together, and on top of that, Sly makes her stealth skill even better. So she can do a lot of wounds and without attacking. And at the last level, she can even investigate whilst taking a run action, which can grant her a constant stream of useful items and companions. So yeah, that's very unique like that and we've got Mike Kozlov uh, Mikhail or Mike was a Russian strongman at a travelling circus fantastic the classic strongman and he's got his bar there that uh, I think it's a little bit bent perhaps from hitting things a little bit too much perhaps there's his skill Proficient. My proficient skill allows him to reroll additional dice when taking stress. At the time, he's only able to do this on attacks, but at level 2, he's able to do this on other rolls as well. And in later levels, he can start healing his stress, which gives him even more rerolls. His additional rerolls work very well with his brawling and toughness skill, allowing him to choose between being aggressive or defensive. And we have Sally Withers. From New York, New York. Smile big, mister. Wow. Too many teeth. <laughs> As one of the only war correspondents at the trenches during the Great War, Sally had the harrowing duty of phot photographing that brutal conflict up close. So she is the photographer of the party. And you'll see if you if you watch the uh, the previous um, share so just a reminder we've got that uh, new one coming up the week in review uh, later today but if you watched the uh, the, the previous um, week in review uh, there we see a comment from our channel uh, that got picked up on the synergy between the photographer and of course Leon as the show off so avid photographer being her skill Investigator who likes uh, more of a support role. Her unique skills great to save actions at the start of the game as is progress, um, and it helps other investigators. as basically giving extra dice, healing, and even giving them additional actions last level. Toughness helps her have already mobile kit, and the arcane mastery gives her a good way to control dice results. Very good, and we have. Jacob Peters from Warsaw, learning how to heal, also teaches us how to harm the bad guys, that is. He's a doctor of mental health institute, though not a psychologist. 
and he comes with his saw so he's well equipped to get in there get into the action <laughs> love that just fantastic and his medic bag fantastic sculpt so Peters can help the, s the team stay alive by healing them as long as he's able to kill a lot of enemies that is the brawling skill helps a lot in that regard as his skill levels up and he can heal based on the killed enemy's health which makes him want to go for the bigger monsters to improve his healing capabilities so surgeon is his um, leading skill uh, unique ability with brawling and swiftness um, and I think we're coming to the end there. We've got Sandra Atkinson from Republic UK. Sandra's love of ancient secrets led her to places she never dreamed of and said it's belonged to the museum. But we don't need the patrons going insane. <laughs> so she is uh, something of a relic hunter. Um, uh, relic seeker, in fact, is her key skill. Uh, Favourite character from the box, from the uh, designer there. So she becomes an unknown relic to the game, even if you are not playing with the unknown relics. Uh, not only that, but if you are already playing with unknown relics, she carries two of them, allowing some very interesting combinations and in high levels of skill allows us to easily get items in the discovery deck and benefit from having multiple items. But for me, the most exciting effect of the last one which allows her to add even more relics to her collection. So instead of investigating, you may gain a random um, transformed relic at this higher level. Wow. Okay, and that was it for, for that update. So then we had update 36, so as well as unlocking uh, the colour of space that was included we were then introduced to 1.83 million um salvador dali so the only difference between me and a madman is that i'm not mad there's a fine line between art and madness salvador dali crosses it regularly both in search of new inspiration and bathing the forces of the old ones anywhere he runs across them look at that <laughs> In Dali's opinion, there's nothing weird about or absurd about monsters' existence. They're just as beautiful, peculiar as any other creature, like a rhinoceros, for example. That doesn't mean, of course, that they belong in our world, unlike the rhino, who's a masterpiece of creation. Being a marksman and arcane mastery, Dali would get ju just fine in the war against the old ones, but to him, that would be too normal and therefore too boring, and so it's flamboyant attitude that makes him stand out from the others evade predictability being able to choose to reroll every single dice while attacking or none at all the more skilled he gets the better he becomes dealing his controlled chaos rerolling one defense as well and eventually choosing which dice to reroll <laughs> love the paint job on that fantastic that's a great job so we also had um sharing from uh simon um a live event and she's been playing through the uh the content there and the witcher joined in the fray <laughs> it's always great to watch playthroughs i enjoy i just, just find this game incredible fun to to both to both watch uh as well as to play um every time it's just such a, a tremendous delight and as mentioned there's a repeat there so we've got uh, on this update a link to the demo available in tabletop simulators so you can go and go ahead and uh, download that and jump straight into the action whilst this is running so update 37 then we ran through an update looking at the new Elder Ones and monsters that have been introduced into the game. So the Elder Ones, along with the episodes of one of the other modular parts of the game, started a game you can choose and each create the scenario. Of course, uh, creating new two new old ones in this installment, um, Sathugra and uh, Asatoth. So Sathugra, the Elder God Sathugra, is being the more benign um, 
<coughs> though it attacks not through physical means but mental. It rarely moves itself, preferring sloth-like indolence, in, indolence uh, to action, and it afflicts those around it with some crushing weariness. To battle to the girl is to battle your own fatigue, to carry the weight of many words, worlds on your back. And to wish nothing more than the sweet release of eternal sleep. Yet such afflictions are only for the Elder God's enemies, making them vulnerable to attack by its cultists, ready to sacrifice victims in Sothogra's ravening more. So we've got like a giant toad like creature, lots of eyes and fur and wings. <laughs> Quite a mix. So this kid's right. Why am I so damn tired? Peter's and Julian. And there's the, uh, the miniature there. You can see what his eyes all over it. The all-seeing eyes of Sothogra. <laughs> there you go. And there's a painted render, <coughs> which looks superb, as always. So, obviously, they've got the uh, the various stages, but I'm not feature, I'm not venturing into those. Obviously, they increase in terms of the dice rolls, the different effects when it's revealed and as it uh, progresses along the track. So, it comes with these uh, icons, which are fatigue. Um, and obviously, these are scattered throughout the Elder God Sothogura's uh, mythos deck, also known as the Sleep of Nkai, can obstruct investigators' wounds and stress tracks with fatigue tokens that makes their spaces unavailable for the rest of the game. And the only way to get rid of them is by resting, and when you do so, you may heal two instead of three in order to remove one token. Thogger's effects and mythos give investigators a lot of these tokens, whilst also making them lose stress and wounds, bringing them to the more world of pain. So alongside Thogger, we have the Amorthus Scion, um, so formless masses of black goo and teeth with no discernible internal structure. So there we go. And there's a painted render of that there. Excellent. So Sogu's minions are the amorphous science and they start small but as the game progresses the investigators take thief tokens they become harder and harder to kill so an attacking by thugger uh, but a fatigue token reduce wounds taken by one so when you're attacking it um sorry when attacked by an investigator with a fatigue token there you go <coughs> reduce the rules by one and as you can see here they've updated the graphics slightly so you include on here with non-certain terms how many of each monster you can expect to see in the pool um, when playing with the new monsters now so Azadoth was the new um, other new Elder God included in the core box so you find references to this thing everywhere in ancient ruins but almost never its name it's the uh, quote from Sandra there, Asatos is an out of God, immortal, eternal, and normally present. In fact, no investigator living or dead has ever encountered its true self, but many projections of the entity. And I think there was some comments again around this on the, uh, the forums, just the fact that, you know, Asatos is, is, I mean, it's massive. So this is about an aspect of its form being rendered upon the earth uh, as a great old one. There he is. <clears throat> and I love the colour that's uh, come from this as well. I think my, my biggest concern when I saw the initial um, renders and playthroughs um, without a stuff painted up, certainly, was it all looked quite drab and dreary compared to the first uh, outing of Season 1 and 2. But, uh, yeah, great to see some, some colour being imbued back into the game. Love the colour. Um, and it just really kicks up the table presence rather than just lots of drab, dark... Um, baddies and whatnot. Again, I'll not go through all the details. They are there, available for you to uh, read at your leisure. Uh, however, it does include these cosmic presents uh, tokens, as opposed to the fatigue tokens. So, as Doth 
Stephen Sultan comes with cosmic tokens throughout the game and influences other monsters by placing the tokens on them. Turning the cosmic. Cosmic enemies have one extra health and roll one extra green die when attacking. Ouch. Moreover, Astatoth has two cosmic upheaval cards that count as a summoning symbol and draws and resolves another mythos card. That means when playing against Astoth, it is a bit more unpredictable than it would advance on the track. In addition, at later stages he starts advancing with only two symbols rather than three, and when Astoth is near, you know the end is nigh. And so the accompaniers with Astoth, the dancers of Astoth, and I love, I absolutely love this miniature. So the face of the dancers of Astoth seem comical in description. A uh, multi-limbed creature of a razor crest wielding a sort of trumpet. I want to know, I want to make some jokes, but I know how dangerous they are, is the quote from Sally there. <laughs> and yes, there we go, so all these lovely tentacles are playing a trumpet. Stuff like that. Fantastic render. <laughs> so when destroyed, place a cosmic token on non-cosmic cultists or monster with the most health in its space. So Asatoth minions are the dancers of Asatoth. <coughs> Easily to deal with, but can turn other enemies cosmic upon death. So yes, definitely something to be aware of. And you get four of those uh, along with that stuff. So in addition then, you have new monsters. Because obviously we have the new unknown monster track. They can add more monsters into the fray for every episode that you're playing. And don't forget they have included, if you back the Kickstarter, um, the um, the monsters, the unknown monsters uh, cards for the unspeakable box as well. But otherwise they will include the monster cards for season one and season two in the core box when it hits retail. So that is already included and unlocked. So a great new feature of this game is a new unknown monsters can be added to the game. Each enemy in the box comes with its unknown monster card and in addition the usual stats and effects that we're, when it appears in the episodes they also have special when the elder one advances effect that makes them behave differently affecting the episodes in each uh, unique way so we have the ghast from a distance you think kangaroos and then you get close and no they ain't <laughs> is the uh, quote from Leon there there we go so you can see there, and we have the uh, with the new purple background cards. These are the new um, unknown monster cards. So you have five in the pool. They have three health each. Uh, and here, and you have these new tokens that will determine randomly where these things will come out each time you encounter them. When the other one advances, even gas. So each gas moves one space towards the investigator nearest to it. To summon one gas at the farthest gate. Uh, one gas in your space. Wow, they come out thick and fast. Gas might not have a huge pull of attack, but don't be fooled if you can't kill it in a single shot. It hurts you. And when playing against monsters, be prepared to deal with a swarm. There are five gas miniatures, and two are spawned every time the older one advances. Ouch. Very good. We have the serpent people. Uh, formidable combatants. Be wary of their prehensile tails. It's a uh, Hukon, because of course with the martial arts going up against these face to face, toe to toe. Mm, very challenging. The serpent people or serpent men ruled the earth long before humankind evolved, but not for much longer thereafter. And there they are. Fantastic job on the, again the, uh, the the painting there and the, also the sculpt as well really really love the detail on those figures so when it attack each tentacle also counts as a success and when the older one advances when you're playing with them as an unknown monster and again you get five of these in a pool with two health each the nearest serpent man moves two spaces towards you and each serpent man moves one space towards you and summon two serpent men to the furthest gate so serpent men are also a swarm type monster meaning that there can be a lot of them on the board at the same time they're not hard to kill but can strike hard by counter tentacles as successes and then we also have the gug it's only a tiny bit more difficult to wrestle than bears tiny bit 
<laughs> Gugs are large, covered in black fur and have vertical mouths with huge number of teeth. <laughs> Again, great job on the uh, on the render here. The multiple eyes, the claws, the teeth. And there's the uh, the painted um, mini. Superb <laughs> skulls. <laughs> so we get two of these, five health each. Um, it gains a green when attacking if it has any wounds. And when the elder one advances, each gug moves three spaces towards you. And then each gug takes one wound and deals one wound to every other figure in its space. Some of one gug will escape. Gugs are large creatures that get stronger when wounded. And when the elder one advances, they run towards active investigators and deal wounds to all figures in their space. Ouch. They might hurt investigators, but could also wound other enemies in their way as well. Hmm. Okay. So potential. Um use um strategic use there the gay yothan the gay yothan as a species of sapient but not sentient creatures selectively bred by the kinan in the time before man walked the earth ah. was this uh, perhaps reference to the uh, rhinoceros like creature um the uh, sabado dali uh quote we read earlier so here we go fantastic again just great job of this this hair it always reminds me of a bit dark crystal ish um again for for those who have seen that maybe i'm showing my age now but they did recently redo that on uh, i think it was, it was it on netflix uh so four health two in the pool when it attacks it heals one for each uh, elder sign that is rolled, and when an elder one advances, uh, the furthest moves three spaces towards you, and any cultist space leaves follow it. Leaves follow it, and summon a new one to the nearest gate. So their horse-like mounts carry cultists around when moving around the elder one advances. They hit hard and can heal themselves when attacking. <coughs> so hence, if they move a space and there's cultists with it, they will follow it. So we're effectively riding its back. So fisher from outside. It's like an ostrich and a lizard. And a, okay, it's none of those things. Here's the uh, quote from Leon. Fisher from outside are a servant of the great old ones sent to Earth to act as proxies of their various cults. And they are, <laughs> in their form, almost kind of pterodactyl-esque. Is, uh, is my thinking looking at that uh, render there so we get two of these in the pool they got three life each after attacking or being attacked for each elder sign the investigator takes one stress and when the elder one advances each fisher from outside moves to your space summon a fisher at the nearest gate so they fly directly at the active investigator space when they activate and can also be stressful to deal with as each elder sign rolled when attacking or being attacked ah causes the investigator to take stress nice very good and we have the doll so you must sense the attack before it comes they give no warning we can the dolls are gigantic Burrowing worm-like creatures that prey on anything living, though they seem to prefer hunting live prey. So these are a bit like, th oh, I'm guessing, sort of the worms from Dune. There we go, and there's the uh, the painted form. Just great job. All right, those t <laughs> giant teeth. So have a look. So you get one of these in the pool. They have seven life, and when it attacks each success there was two wounds instead of one ouch and when an older one advances dolls move two spaces towards the investigator with most wounds taken in case of a tie the nearest of the tied investigators and then summon a doll to the nearest gate if it's not already on the board so the doll is a huge worm like creature has a lot of health it's hard Although it's only three attack dice, success deals two wounds each. This can be devastating against unaware investigators as they also pray that those are, that are already bleeding targeting investigators with most wounds when moving. 
so it could definitely mark your death very quickly. Then we had the unnameable, the so-called unnameable, only lit defies logical description it has a tendency to blur itself in its viewers minds making it difficult to recall details of encounters with it i think wasn't there a film called the void that i think had a similar thing to this i think uh, the concept of the people were a bit struggling they almost kind of they had this perception filter um um cosmic power i think it was the void um so they were usually good with words, but that thing, <laughs> I got no idea. Very good. There he is. And again, I, I really like in the, uh, the, the the addition of color um, to these uh, minis and these renders here on the uh, the artwork. So. For its unknown monster, then you're going to get one of these in a pool. Got six health. Uh, cannot be wounded while there is another monster or cultist in the same space. That is definitely hard. Uh, when the other one advances, the unnameable moves two spaces towards you. Any monster in the space it leaves it will follow, and summon the unnameable in the furthest gate. So last but not least <coughs> is the unnameable. Other enemies in its space protect it from being wounded and it even drags other monsters with it when attacking. Oh, sorry, when activating. All of that while having big stats. Six health and four attack dice. Ouch. They are big stats. That's it folks. Really happy with the new older ones of the monsters we have in the box. Certainly helping bring in new twists to your game of Cthulhu's FBI. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And see you next time. But that was not all. So as well as then unlocking Sabradali, We had then at 1.88 million the inclusion of the new lost episode six so what did that bring for us the color out of space lost episode loving that artwork this place was host to a visitor of some kind it's unsure what it was or even if it can be described all that's known is that the land is overgrown the animals are no longer themselves including the people yet the cults are here for their own sinister purposes it all started with meteorite after that came the color out of space and then everything became different and this lost episode investigators must try to keep the effects of the intriguing visitor at bay and stop the ritual and its channeling its power. To do so, they must eliminate the affected creatures, the mutated animals, cute and harmless herbivores turned into carnivores as there is no saving them. Once 12 are put to rest, the energy becomes too dissipated to be used by the occult. It won't be easy though, as these creatures are vicious and the colour out of space affects all creatures around it including investigators color tokens are added to the spaces in the map near the ethereal mass of energy harming investigators and forcing them to lose sanity its beauty can't be denied though and admiring it would at least heal stress so we have the obviously the episode card the monster card eight mythos cards 15 discovery cards tokens the box holds all of this content so that was added for us and of course as i mentioned we have the week in review coming up later today so that will be 12 noon est that's 5 p.m uk time so there is a link for that there and then of course in the addition to the uh the elders the monsters the investigators the new relics the new unknown monsters um rules we also now have so a manner of uh, new insanities added to the content as well probably the hardest piece to design since there's a lot of restrictions and requirements around them they must have a good balance between the good and the bad effects in a way which drive you and play around them you also need unique feeling different from other insanities and on top of that they must fit the theme all of while having to fit the new lines of text so let's take a closer look at these insanities so 
the travelling fugue triggers. The investigator feels the urge to move, and they must move two spaces away in any direction. They can't move less than two, if possible. Uh, that means that sometimes they can't choose a certain direction where they would move only one space. This can be bad since it might drag you into monsters, but if timed correctly, it can be a free run action. And we had over carry. Investigators must choose to protect one at the start of the game. Um, when the insanity triggers, the investigator takes stress based on how many wounds their protected has taken, unless they're in the same space, in which case they get, can help the protected fully heal them. As, a, as this relieves them, they heal their own stress. This insanity incentivizes them to stay together and, when it's not possible, encourages them to take care of their protected and keep their health up so they don't take unnecessary wounds and heal wounds from time to time. How thoughtful. <laughs> I certainly see some very powerful combos coming out of these with the different investigators and the different facilities. Uh, megalomania can really go an investigator's head. They must be constantly aware of the other investigator's sanity threshold and push their sanity to their limits in order to keep ahead of everyone else <laughs> and get their benefit. Feeling proud that the best version of themselves and are better than everyone else in their perception at least and then to heal all their stress. And then the compulsive accumulating card. The investigator must always be in search of items and companions, be it by investigating or in something, sometimes be convincing others to trade with them. As the game progresses, it becomes harder and harder to keep up with the insanity since they need more and more cards. <laughs> The impulsive aggression. An investigator of positive aggression should always try to be in space with their enemies when triggering this insanity. The more stressed they are, the more wounds they deal to an enemy in the same space. The problem is there's no so the problem is that if there are no enemies to take out, uh, they hurt all investigators in their space, including themselves. Wow. And the uh, autophobia. You really want to avoid being alone. Investigators are preferred. But in some cases, having a couple of companions could also help you deal with this insanity's negative effect. We have bloodlust. Mayor's investigators focus on killing enemies, be it cult sponsors or other ones. The more enemies are killed, the more investigator heals, the stress triggers, and then it resets. Killing spree must start again. And now you see it, now you don't, or don't you? If the investigator has hallucinations, they can't see monsters in their space, and they start seeing one when the investig uh, when insanity triggers. But if they do see a monster, they realise that the monster is just a creation of their minds, and it vanishes from sight immediately. <laughs> so it's very interested. Uh, interesting inclusions there um, and for the next goal at 1.92 million uh, update number 40 what fresh hell is this we will unlock a new investigator having unlocked um, the color from outer space Dorothy Parker from Boston Massachusetts wherever I go including here it's against my better judgment <laughs> so Dorothy's mind is as quick as her sharp tongue as a resolute writer and satirist she always looking to things from an original point of view seeing patterns where others don't and as a result finding helpful items and companions once per term in a safe space Dorothy may take stress to investigate her space as a special action allowing her to receive up to two discovery cards every turn as her skills develop she gets more and more comfortable not having to take stress and even becoming able to discard conditions and heal other investigators with her wit and sense of humor with her stealth and swiftness allowing her to move easily across the spaces dorothy is the perfect investigator to well investigate and there she is a painted figure and that's it folks so hope you enjoyed that i hope you enjoy walking through um, the kickstarter as i mentioned in the comments it's one of those things that i really wish um there was more of um and seeing as it wasn't coming about i thought you know what 
I'm just going to bite the bullet. I'm going to do this content myself and put it out there for all you lovely folks. So please, if you've liked this, like the videos. There's a number of them available now. Um, you can go back and see all the previous updates on this campaign. Um, hit that subscribe button and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll no doubt be back um, before this campaign's finished we've got five days left um we're currently sat at 1.88 million um i think we're easily going to reach the 2 million mark will it smash 3 million we'll see but thanks for for joining me and uh yeah speak to you again soon cheers family bye